Welcome to Crosstalk. I am Peter Lavelle. European Union leaders meet to consider what is called a minor change to the Lisbon Treaty. That minor change is a guaranteed financial bailout of weaker members. Is this legitimizing moral hazard? And is it even democratic? To discuss the EU and the Lisbon Treaty, I'm joined by Stefan Jurnik in Stockholm. He's Director of Corporate Relations at the Center for European Policy Studies. In London, we go to Robert Oles. He is Director of the Bruges Group. And in Amsterdam, we cross to Harry von Bommel. He is a Dutch Socialist Party member of Parliament and another member of our crosstalk team, Yelena Hunga. All right, gentlemen, crosstalk rules in effect. You have differences of opinion here, so I want it to be shown. Uh, first of all, I'd like to go to Harry. Um, when, the, when the Lisbon Treaty was being sold, peddled to uh, the Europeans, if I remember correctly, the, one of the selling points was that there would never be bailouts of member countries. That that's what, how they watered it down, saying, look, this is, we're never going to go that far. You know, it, we're, you know, we're not going to violate the sovereignty of other countries. We're not going to certainly pay for people that make mistakes. And is my memory failing me? Because I remember that that was a selling point. I know that that was one of the aspects that was brought into the discussion um, because, of course, uh, it is a bit uh, the, the, the wrong way that the European Union and the monetary union has developed. Um, of course, you, you cannot have um, uh, uh, a single currency if you do not have a political union, and we're facing the problems that have to be, have to be dealt with uh, concerning that today. Stefan, what about you? I mean, do you support this, this uh, new clause <clears throat> being brought into the uh, Lisbon uh, Treaty, don't you? I think it's very important first to say that the reason why we have a Lisbon Treaty is to make EU more efficient in decision making and more democratic. And I think that is absolutely what has happened Ridiculous. since it has been now at, in, in, at power since uh, exactly one year. It was the uh, 1st of December last year that it came into power. So I think that is something which is very important to deal with. Robert, what do you think about then, of that? Course, then of course, right. I think that was one of the most ridiculous comments I've ever heard. To argue that the Lisbon Treaty, which was brought in without having a, a referendum in m many of the countries which were promised referendums, especially in Great Britain, France also, when the Irish rejected the Lisbon Treaty and had to vote again, to argue that the Lisbon Treaty makes the EU more democratic and accountable is preposterous. <laughs> that is absurd argument. That is absolutely bizarre and totally fanciful. I think that's very, I think that's very, I think that's very strong words. On. Stefan, go ahead. You want to reply? It is. It is it's ridiculous. I think, I think, How can the European Union the reason, be argued the, that it's democratic? Stefan, go ahead. First, the reason what to, for the Lisbon Treaty was that you wanted to make EU more efficient when it comes to decision making. No, it wasn't. When EU it was to centralise power but, to the elite in can Brussels I, can to I, take power can I away continue? from the nation state. Stefan, continue. Continue with your point. Go ahead. It, it's, very, it's very difficult to argue when there's somebody who interrupts all the Go time. Go ahead, Stefan. You continue. The, the, it's continue. Once talk. again, the, re the, the reason the for the Lisbon Treaty was to make EU more efficient and more democratic in relation to the enlarged <coughs> European Union up to 27 member uh, states. That was absolutely the case. Right. Long-term hey. plan to centralize power. Hey, Harry, what do you think about that? I mean, I want to talk about this, this bailout clause uh, uh, in this program, but uh, we've heard, is, is, is the EU now more efficient and democratic? Well, first of all, we, ha we have to, do, to bring the, uh, the issue of sovereignty into the debate. And I agree that the, the sovereignty is at stake because uh, due to the, the Lisbon Treaty, uh, powers are moving away from the member states towards the centralized uh, European state. Uh, it's not supposed to be called a state anymore because we don't call it a constitution anymore, but it has effectively taken away veto powers from the member states and thereby making Brussels stronger, uh, more democratic in the sense that European Parliament has more power. But if this power is taken away from the member states, especially from the smaller <coughs> member states, then uh, there is a democratic loss, in my opinion. Now, when it comes I to think I agree with Harry. the weak countries... When it comes to bailing out the weak countries, we are now faced by the fact that we have weaker countries in 
this common economy and that we have to help them in order to save the euro. Uh, but uh, as it looks today, it might be the case that we cannot save the euro eventually and therefore we are now helping weak economies um, uh, by pouring in money from taxpayers well, in all the EU Harry, you're making a the, the euro is the problem. The euro <laughs> is the problem. That is one of the key things which has made these other economies, Absolutely. Ireland, it, Portugal, this, this Italy, is a, this Spain, is the point. This is the point I want to get at. Them. This is the point I want to get at. Stefan, I'd like to go to you. Stefan, I'd like to go to you. Go ahead, go ahead. I think it would have been, I think it would have been nice if we talk about what is really happening. First, one issue is that the European Parliament has become much more important in the Lisbon Treaty than previously. And the European Parliament is an elected parliament, which we have to remember. Secondly, the national parliaments have much Not more influence than they, than they had previously. So that's also a democratic process that has developed. Another issue which has also developed is that you can collect one million signatures if you would like to change something. That did not exist previously. So I find this more democratic and it's also efficient in the decision making because in certain areas you have a qualified majority voting, but you always have very qualified yes, things. You, you, are you have qualified out, when it comes to nations. Harry, go ahead. You are, leaving, you are leaving out the loss of veto rights. Veto rights are important instruments in the hands of smaller countries such as the Netherlands, Belgium and many other countries, it, also Sweden. Veto rights are important if you want to block the I think uh, you're absolutely decision. wrong because you don't, you're not telling the truth because in certain areas you still have to have a sort of a consensus on the decision making. That's foreign policy, defence, yes, and you also in, have it on taxation. In an increasingly in small aspects. amount of areas, so, democracy I mean, can only if exist if in the nation just, state. But let's get back just, to the issue of the euro things and the disaster not true, that it's causing. It's Gen argument. Gentlemen, I, I agree. Let's go back to the euro here because that, that's, how our, that's our point of reference here. I mean, moral hazard is certainly in play here. And this is a slippery slope, and this is what may destroy the euro itself. Where's the fiscal responsibility in this treaty? Okay, it's a, it's a monetary union, but there's no fiscal responsibility, so you can just go down the path of just wrecking your economy, and, well, let's, t let's say it, gentlemen, the Germans bail you out. How do you feel about that, Harry? I mean, it, this, this well, is not the way you can run an economy. No, no household can run that no. way, and no independent that state can run that way. That is true, and therefore this crisis is being abused by those in favor of a federal Europe to take important steps towards the United States of Europe. We never wanted Very true. that. It was promised that we would not create a, a European state by accepting the, the Lisbon Treaty. We now see that through the back door they are trying to make this this European project, which is in essence an economic project, not a monetary project, into a European state. That's not I mean, what the we European, wanted. The European should Monetary we, Union is a political project. The answer, I think, is for countries to leave the Euro to recognise that it was a mistake joining. Okay, that's the problem. May I just say one thing? Let's go to Stockholm. Gentlemen, let's go to Stockholm. Go ahead. We talked, you, you, some of you, I didn't know who it exactly what I was supposed to say that, that you talked about fiscal issues. And taxation is a domestic issue, which you have to remember. You have to have a consensus on that if you are that going not, to have the EU That is not EU true. View. The EU has an so, influence on taxation. It, it, bullied, it bullies mean, countries to have higher corporation tax. It controls all indirect taxation. It controls a, an increasing amount of business taxation. So to argue that taxation is solely the, the sphere the EU of the is member not states dealing is with not the EU, true. With it, with Stefan the business in taxation. Stockholm is it's again absolutely wrong. wrong. It's absolutely I'm, I think I'm at the EU right. controls you're just all using indirect gentlemen, taxation gentlemen, policy. Stefan, go that ahead. Stefan can reply. Let Stefan reply. In order, to be in order to be constructive, I think it's better one is gained, one is ruled by what is happening instead of by emotions. And I think you're very emotional in what you say. I try to stick to what the you're fact how the wrong, EU Stephane. is run. I'm not absolutely you're, wrong. You're I'm absolutely wrong. right. You don't recognize the EU functions. controls indirect the taxation. The interesting thing is that you don't, you don't know how it functions. You don't know how it functions. And I think also the European Monetary Union is a political project. You have to remember that.
Harry, do you want to jump in there? Let Harry jump in. Harry, jump in. Harry, jump in. Sir, we are now in the middle of a debate of creating more instruments for the, uh, for the European Commission to introduce European taxes. There are examples on the table. We are now in the, in the debate of creating sanctions. Uh, the European Commission wants more instruments to get involved in national economies, sanctions where uh, uh, economies and, and governments do not follow the European rules. So we are right in the middle of a debate that we never intended to have, and we should have never entered I into this the project is also of, a, of a monetary union without a political union. And a I think this is a very strong follow, misunderstanding. can only follow a political union, and now we're trying to, 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 to get a political union accepted because we are facing problems with the monetary union. That's, that's the reality. The no, monetary union I think won't even work it. if there well, is well, political what, union. The whole what concept you is wrong. When, when you the start to do European monetary European union monet is wrong. European Go ahead, when, Stefan. Go wait. ahead. Go ahead. OK. When, we, when the European Monetary Union was started, there was a stability pa pact connected to it. The problem with that was that the Commission never was tough enough with those countries mm -hmm. who never followed the rules. Now, in the Lisbon Treaty, if you understand what the Lisbon Treaty is, the Commission has got a in slightly increased possibility to go back and overview what countries are doing on the economic side. So we, in the future, hopefully, will not have lots of... Uh, <clears throat> complicated uh, developments on, on the economic side. And that is well, that, what has absurd. happened with the Lisbon Treaty. If we Treaty. look at the situation in many of our economies, we see that the national debts are far greater than is accepted in, in the Stability and Growth Pact. That we see that budget, but I mean, that's, budget deficits that's also, are far greater that's than also, is to be accepted. And I think that's so, also so sanctions, something which is, which is belonging be to the with the country in question. If I happen to be now in Stockholm, which is probably, together with Finland, the best-run countries uh, when it comes to not low level, very low level of deficit. And, of course, it's a domestic issue. You have to... All right, gentlemen, I'm going to jump in here. We're going to have a short break. Yeah. After a short break, we'll continue our discussion on the Lisbon Treaty. Stay with RT.